So I am now doing image searches within Google Images for my elements for my Candyland fantasy landscape. And I can be pretty specific sometimes in my descriptions. So if I do Rock Candy Mountain, I get a lot of images of this location called Big Rock Candy Mountain. Even some illustrations of it, but it's not the rock candy I need. So I need to specify just rock candy. And then I need to go to Tools and say Size Large. And now what I really want to look for are images at full resolution. So when I find a thumbnail that's interesting, I right click and I say open link in new tab. Then I click on that link. I hover and I'll see that its size should be more than a thousand in both directions. And then I right click on it and I say open image in new tab. And then it will give me the full size image and I can see how sharp the focus is and where I might be able to cut it off. And then if I like it, I drag it off into my organizational system, which is different folders for these different five elements I need. And how do I know my five elements? It's from my sketch. So I need jelly bean moon stuff. I need um, cotton candy fields. I need a big rock candy mountain. I need licorice trees. And then maybe some more cotton candy for the clouds. And I might need to find some sky as well at some point. Ooh. You're going to collect a lot more reference than you end up using. And you'll get surprised sometimes by what comes up in the search results, but it might lead you into new inspiration. But you also don't want to spend just forever searching. So find a few things, work with them, check their quality, right click, open image in new tab so that you see it at full resolution. If you can't see it on your screen or it takes up a lot of your screen or um, just a portion of your screen because it's so large. If you can't do that, it's probably not good enough to use. You want it at least 1,000 pixels, preferably bigger. Even if we're just making this in Photop today instead of Photoshop. All right, so that one's nice and nice and big. Right, I think I, I have enough to get started, and then I can always find more to kind of fill in. Oh, I like these. These, these are like flat plain kind of rocks, glacial shards. I'm going to make use of this. Yeah, that's kind of almost a water element. It might be helpful. And you might find some that you just like so much, you know you're going to use them. And I've got a lot of kind of generic pastry ones as well. But it all starts with your sketch. So how do we get your sketch into the computer? Well, let me clean this up a little bit. This was searching on Google. My preference is to search for things on Pixabay, pixabay.com, because these resources they come in already curated so that they're they're high quality but you do want to watch where the focus is and then you go to free download and you can get very large size downloads you do need to log in in order to to be able to download their largest sizes and what you'll see which is unlike what what i see here is before when you do the results 
there'll be a bar at the top right here of um, sponsored results that are from stock image sites. So you want to scroll past those to the actual Pixabay results. The only reason I don't get that is because I've contributed, you know, more than 10 images, donated them to the site. All right. It's another nice waffle image. So when you download from Pixabay, you don't just drag it off. Instead, it downloads at full resolution to your downloads folder. And then you take it from there and put it where you need it to be. And if you ever want to double check, you can just double click if you're on a Mac or, or a PC. It will open in its default image viewer, which for a Mac is preview. Which for a PC is, I think, what is it? Like image video player, something like that. Okay, now I've got a lot of resources. How do I get my sketch into the computer? Well, I sketched this on the computer, right? But one way is if you're on a laptop like mine, you might have an app like FaceTime that allows you to see, use your camera, right? And let's say my art history textbook here is my sketch. So what I can do is hold it up and then do a screen grab. Command Shift 4 or print screen. And I can draw it around my sketch, let go, close the app. And then it will show up on the desktop. When I open it up, you'll see that it's reversed. And I'm just double clicking to open it in a default image viewer. If I go to tools, I should be able to flip it. So it's the right way. And it's fairly low resolution. You know, this is just screen resolution. You can see how blurry it is. And through a, through a laptop camera. But that's one way to get pixel image acquisition. We don't need anything higher quality than this, than just a photo. So you can also take a photo with your phone. You can email that to yourself, airdrop it, however you can get it onto your device. When you need better quality image acquisition, that's when we go to something like scanning. And scanning is when you put like a flat sketch or a photograph onto a device that will slowly pull pixels from it at whatever resolution you want, like 600 pixels per inch. And we'll do that when we do later illustrations. But however you can get your, your low quality sketch, you know, up onto your screen, that's where we'll start. And then you need a lot of high quality references. So I have cotton candy, I've got a jelly bean nebula. I guess that's one thing I want to look for. I didn't find a good jelly bean moon. So let me quickly go to Google Images because they didn't have it in Pixel Bay. Just do jelly bean, but make sure it is large size. I just need a single jelly bean. I might be able to, here we go, something nice that uh, Google does is it will give you kind of commonly searched variations. So the single jelly bean, of course, they're all branded. Got to find one that's not. This looks pretty nice. I'll open that in a new tab. I'll open this in a new tab. Oh, those are my favorite, the peach. So good. You want to be careful for watermarks. I'll show you this one just so you, the reason we see them at full resolution. So this is barely big enough, but then if I open it, open the image in the new tab, you'll see that it's actually not big enough. So sometimes there's, there's uh, incorrect tags. There used to be an image this size online. That image is no longer there. So all that's left is this low resolution thumbnail. So that's why you have to go through all these steps. And then this one, 
which I thought looked really good. If I open the image in the new tab, it's a decent size just for, for a moon in the atmosphere, but it has that, that watermark on it. And then this one has watermarks all over it. But I like the, the subtle highlight on that. I can show you how to take care of a watermark. And so I'll go ahead and pull that. And then do a quick check if there's anything better. This one's actually called the Jelly Bean Planet. So that has some potential. It's only 700 by 700. That's only 600 by 600. So it's better than nothing, but I like the variation in this one. So I'm going to say open image and new tab. And this is actually a PNG element. So you notice that it has a transparent background, which is nice when you can find it. So if I open that up in a default image viewer, you see how it fills it in with gray. So it's already cut out for me. So now within each of these, there might be certain elements I'm more interested in using than others. So I've got the Jelly Bean Nebula. I'm definitely going to use that. Cotton Candy Fields. I've got to remind myself of what some of these are. This was clouds that kind of looked like cotton candy. So that's going to be my sky. I'm definitely going to use that. This kind of looks like whipped cream. But not as much as I would like. Probably not going to use that. This one has some strong lighting. Yeah, so I'll, I'll try to use that in my mid-range. Then I have others as kind of backups. Cotton candy is good to go. Big Rock Candy Mountain. The blue mountains in the distance might look good. This is some foothills. It's always nice when it's photographed on white. It makes it a little bit easier to select around. But I also have all these kind of colorful ones that I can use. And I have some colorful rock candies that I can cut out to transition into those far mountains. So I've got a lot of elements there. Got this interesting blue rock candy. So I'm, I'm going to have probably 10 or so right from the beginning that I'm using. And now foreground elements, very important. Licorice. I'm going to use this for kind of trees, boulders, foreground elements. And then pastries. These are going to kind of fill in as needed. I have waffles. I have scones. I have berries. I have a mountain of flour and butter. So these might be useful but I'm not as sure about those. Okay. So organize your references, get your sketch into your computer. And we move on from there. So I'm going to show it. This is our Adobe class. So I'm going to continue doing the demos with Photoshop, but remember that you can go to photop.com and do what I'm showing. And at any time, just use your microphone or the chat to, um, to ask questions. And I might go ahead and turn off my captions. But if you need your captions turned on, you just go to your Zoom settings. And you go to More and Captions. And you can turn on these live captions for yourself. I'm just going to hide them so I have a little bit more screen geography to use. Okay. So I need to open up Photoshop. Oh, I need to exit. Sorry, I'm getting my uh, recording tools. I need to move these tools off, off and out of the way. Should be a way to collapse them. So I'm going to open up Photoshop.